I was nine years old, maybe I was 10. Uh, it was just after my diagnosis, shortly after, maybe I was 10. Yeah. Or no, it could, okay, I was diagnosed in June or July 1999. And so this, it even could have been like the following year because my birthday's in November. So I don't know, I was like nine or 10. And I, for the first time in my whole life since my diagnosis, obviously, I finally felt confident injecting my own needles because at the very beginning, I don't know how old you are. I don't even know if you remember this, but (laughs) when I was first diagnosed, we had to practice injecting our needles into oranges and other fruit. I think it was probably mostly mostly oranges. But I had a nurse, like after I was able to come home from the hospital, I had a nurse that came to my house and just kind of oversaw everything that I was doing. It was a very shocking, like a very tra- traumatic, traumatic, <laughs> it was a very traumatic time in my life just because I had never previously had to go to like I was a very healthy kid I never had to go to the doctor really I just it was I had never been in a hospital before and then so yeah the nurse came to the house and I was really scared to give my own injections when I was nine years old and so my parents did it for me for a really long time and then for the very first time I felt like as soon as I could do my own injections I was so proud of myself I felt on top of the world like oh my God, I got this, you know, like I can do it myself. And I remember just feeling so good about it and like so good, so proud of myself. You know that feeling when you're, you do something and you're just like, oh, like I got this, like you're on top of the world. So where I lived growing up, it was like a really small uh, town. It was on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. And so when you travel to the city, to Vancouver, which is, um, you, you might, you've probably heard of Vancouver, BC before. So there's a ferry boat that you have to take. It's like a two and a half hour ferry boat ride, or you can get there by float plane. So we're on the ferry boat. It's like me, my best friend at the time. And then my mom and my best friend, I'm, she also had type one diabetes. We met like through my doctor and I'm just feeling so good because I'm doing my own injections now. So we're all in the cafeteria on the ferry boat. I don't know if you've ever been on a ferry boat, but on this particular one, they have like, you know, you can go and like get meals and stuff. It's a little cafeteria because the boat ride is so long. And so we sit down to eat lunch. I don't even remember what we're eating. I feel like we're, yeah, I don't even know, but we sit down to eat lunch and I take out my injection. It's like, I probably have one somewhere. Um, Yeah, I do. I'll show you. So, these ones, I'm using them again. They're the BD Ultra Fine six millimeter needles, like the really old school ones that remind me of kind of like a, junky needle one of the reasons why after what I'm going to tell you is I avoided these for a really long time because I was embarrassed about them but these needles that I'm now using 21 22 years later (laughs) these are the ones so I whip out this injection this needle and I fill the vial and I'm like so excited because I'm like yes I got this like I'm doing my own injection and I go to inject I I wasn't even thinking I'm like you know like just so excited that I'm doing it myself and I look over I think I had just injected and then I look over and this woman this is 1999 close to year 2000 so this woman with her three kids, she was sitting just across from us, like to the side. And I look over right when she is watching, she's like gasps in horror, like panic stricken all over her face. She grabs her kids, like tries to like cover their eyes. She grabs them. She's like looking like as if my mom had just like killed 
someone in front of her like she was so panic stricken grabbed her kids and like immediately left like left their food and everything like she just like left in a panic and I remember the feeling of like just everything inside of my body just like hit the floor because I felt so shitty it was like like a big bulldozer came and just like plowed me down because here I am nine or ten years old so excited because I can finally do my own injections not thinking that people around me probably just have no idea what diabetes even is and seeing like a little nine or ten year old whip out a needle and inject themselves is like so beyond anything they could even imagine like to them it's probably like it was she's some crackhead (laughs) like you know like it's just something that you don't even think about and obviously I wasn't thinking that at that age you don't think oh I wonder if fucking Susie over there is gonna have an issue and think I'm weird because I'm injecting a needle or whatever like I I wasn't even thinking that I think when you're younger and you're in your authentic your most purest authentic state you don't try to hide who you are and you don't try to hide what you're doing. Kids are so outspoken, right? They like say shit and you're and half the time it's hilarious because they are they speak their truth. They say things that are so true yet so offensive sometimes, right? So but and not saying that injecting needles is offensive, but it just wasn't even on my mind at that age, right? At all. And that was the first time that and the very last time I injected needles in public and that I will I've probably had so many experiences like this one but this one I will never forget it stands out like it happened yesterday because I remember that feeling of just feeling so embarrassed and ashamed and upset and like it was all because of me that she left that room and like I did something wrong when I'm just doing what I have to do to stay alive and I'm young and I it's challenging enough to all of a sudden have this diagnosis and all of these things you have to remember and then something like that happening and it completely transformed how I viewed myself how I viewed my disease I that was the the last time I injected in public probably why that story stands out the most and it was also the very like I ever since then I was just so ashamed I would try to hide my disease because I didn't I felt like it was just it was not something that people would view as okay it I I felt like it made me different I didn't want to make people feel uncomfortable because after that happening and just feeling that like pure panic from this woman who like took all her kids and left and it was all because of me and you know if that had happened to me now it's like I don't I don't give a shit you feel uncomfortable I'm trying to stay alive right and you might feel that way too but as a child it completely transformed how I viewed my disease into my teens, into even my early 20s. I would try to hide it because I felt really ashamed of it. And I I feel like these experiences that we have, that you have early in your life, they do kind of change how you know you view yourself in the future and how things unfold and you when you're young you are your most purest authentic self and and it's not until things like this happen until things in your life happen that change that for you a little bit and so I just you know and growing up I always I felt so ashamed I (laughs) could tell you so many other stories of like just I would hide my injections. I would wait till I would eat dinner on a date and feel like so sick. I'd be like, oh my God, my blood sugar's going up. But I would excuse myself to the restroom. Like I would wait until I could go to the bathroom to inject my needle because I was just so embarrassed to take care of myself in front of people because I had to inject needles when in my mind, that is something that makes other people uncomfortable. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. I want to be like you I want to be viewed as equal to you 
and I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable sitting at the table next to me. I don't know what you're going to think about me, if you're going to think I'm a bad person, if you're going to think that I'm doing drugs at the table or like whatever it is, whatever had like triggered my mind at that young age when I was sitting there injecting my needle, feeling really good. And then all of a sudden it like my world turned upside down. I was so ashamed and embarrassed about it that I would hide it. And by do, by hiding it, I stopped taking care of myself like I should be because I was more concerned of what other people thought about me than how to take care of myself and it didn't mean that I didn't want to be healthy and that I didn't want to take care of myself but the thought of people not accepting me was so prominent at that young age that it kind of took over how I cared for myself and my diabetes so the reason I'm sharing this is because I know we all have stories we all come from completely different backgrounds our journey with diabetes is completely different there's yes some similarities where we can relate to each other's stories and then there's also other people's stories that actually like I even learn things every day I'm like oh my gosh like we all have a different story to share and even if you can just think of maybe a different time in your life if you don't if you've never felt embarrassed about your disease you are a superhuman <laughs> so because I, I never had that right like I always felt embarrassed growing up I don't anymore I've I, it took me years and years to build self-confidence around showing my disease and co- talking about it even like if you had asked me even five or six years ago Taja one day you are going to be talking about diabetes on a podcast that other people actually listen to I would be like no you're wrong that's not that's not what I'm going to be doing because I was not fully accepting of my disease and I just yeah it took me a long time to kind of get over that and I think all of those experiences that you have kind of like add up right and they either create like they just create your outcome and how you view things in the future but I don't think any outcome is negative because even though this story (laughs) sounds negative but it taught me so much And the strength that you have for persevering and continuing forward despite these times in your life where maybe you were made to feel small is just, just shows how powerful you are and how strong you are as a person. And so no matter what your journey has looked like, the reason why I'm sharing this story is because if you look at your life, where in your life are you giving other people the power or giving other people's thoughts and opinions of you to dictate your future and to get in the way of you becoming the best person that you can be in this lifetime. Like where in your life are you allowing the thoughts and opinions of others to Get in the way of you reaching your full potential. And it could be diabetes related or it could be something else related. Think about that for a second because so often we don't follow our heart. We don't follow our truth because maybe we're scared. And when you can come back to your truth and your heart, I think that is where all the answers are. And that's where you're going to really find true happiness and be led into whatever whatever path is right for you ultimately that is what I believe so that's why I'm sharing this story I hope that this episode inspires you in some way today thank you so much for tuning in and I will talk to you very soon bye for now